How would you escape a hostile protest in one piece? In this video, former law enforcement officer Chip Eberhardt breaks down an incident and what he did when protesters swarmed his vehicle as he arrived at Donald Trump's inauguration ball. And a quick reminder, we have a gun giveaway going on right now. You can enter for free, but it ends really soon. Just click the link in the description below to reveal which brand new gun you could win. Let's watch this video. Hi, this is Chip Everhart, and today we're going to talk about what to do if you find yourself in the middle of a protest. The scene is January 2017. My wife and I had been privileged to have been invited to the inauguration and the inaugural ball for our 45th president. We found in the morning during the inauguration there were some but not very many protesters. Somehow they don't seem to get up as early as many of us. But in the evening time, when we were going to the inaugural ball, we took a taxi from the hotel to the demilitarized zone, the furthest that any civilian vehicles could go, and we'd have to travel on foot beyond that. As we reached the demilitarized zone in the taxi, we found ourselves instantly surrounded by a large mob of protesters, well in excess of 500 people. The entire taxi was being surrounded and they were starting to push on the taxi. I don't know if they were trying to topple it or what, but it was very clear who the protesters were and who those were in attendance of the ball. Some of us had on tuxedos and ball gowns, and it was clear the people with the hoodies and the backpacks were not attending the ball. It was a very hostile crowd. Obviously, attending an event like this with such high security, I was unable to carry. The only weapon I had with me was my pin light. I had to use this and my body force to get out of the taxi and then got my wife free. We then found a single woman who was also attending and very scared. We took her under our protection and we forced our way through. Holding the flashlight in my arm high up, using the flashlight when I needed to blind, to distract, to disrupt the people in front of us. It was a long journey, and it's something that I'd never want to go through again. As a former police officer, uh, I've been through things like this on duty. That's my job, but as a civilian, it's not something I'd ever want to deal with again. If you find yourself in the middle of a protest, the first thing to do is try your best to blend in. Try not to elevate whatever hostilities and violence there are. If you have on your don't tread on me, police lives matter, black lives matter, whatever shirt you have on, maybe it's time to take it off, turn it over, blend in, get out. Your friends, your family, they don't want you to be a hero. They don't want you to fight. They want you to evade and avoid violence whenever you can. And again, sometimes that mean, might mean blending in until you can get to safety. By blending in, I don't mean being antagonistic. I mean, just going with the flow, making them seem that you're part of them, and then getting out of there, getting the safety. Now, as far as driving, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Masada Ayub, someone asked him, what do you do when you find yourself driving into the protest? And his response was, well, there's this thing called Waze. It's an application that tells you when there's a lot of traffic. It's kind of God's way of telling you, don't go that direction. So that's the first thing. If you know there's gonna be protests, Get out of there. Don't be involved. Don't be the anti-protester if you can help it. Evading and avoiding is always the safest way. A lot of us like to believe that our chances of survival are higher because we have a firearm. Now, clearly, if you don't have a firearm, your chances of survival are closer to zero than they are to 100. But even when you have a firearm, your chances of surviving, whenever there's a violent encounter, are really only 50-50. If you can evade and avoid any violence or hostility, your chances of survival are 100%. And we're talking about surviving, we're not just talking about physical, we're talking about financial, possible criminal, spiritual, and emotional. There are many injuries that can occur, but if you can evade and avoid, do that. 
Jeff Eberhardt, Concealed Carry Magazine. See you next time. I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. If you enjoy videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell. We'll let you know every time something new comes out. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.